I'm wrapping up a week that has been grueling, yet very fulfilling, but also frustrating at times. I've bounced all around Ukraine, or at least uh, started in the south, and spent a chunk of the week in Kiev, in the center of the country, or central, uh, in central Ukraine, and I've been in a couple spots in the west over the weekend. Right now I'm in Lviv, which is a very beautiful city. I'm at the Renok Square, the Market Square, in the heart of the Old Town here. And probably from just taking a look at the architecture, you can get the impression that it has a very European feel. At times this weekend I've start to blink a little bit and just get confused about where I am, which country am I in, because Ukraine looks and feels and even sounds a whole lot different based on where you are, particularly if you're in the west versus the, the east, which I haven't really experienced, or the south, which is like the east, the south is a Russian-speaking area. Well, the west is a very Ukrainian area, pro-Ukrainian. They speak, I mean, the, the locals almost exclusively speak Ukrainian, whereas in the, the south and the east, they speak a lot of Russian, and it feels much different in different places. And at times this week, I, I would draw the parallel of seeming like Bosnia or Macedonia or maybe even Switzerland. Probably Switzerland is not as good of a comparison, but a multi-ethnic European state that really feels like a different country based on which area or region of the country you're in. And I was getting that feeling this weekend in particular when I ventured to the west here in Lviv and yesterday when I was in ivano Frankivsk, where I went to listen and briefly speak with Mikhail Saakashvili, the former Georgian president who I've discussed and shown to you in the recent videos I published on this channel. Well, anyway, I'm going to do a little bit of a walk and talk. This is a very impromptu vlog and I guess a little bit of a walking tour of Lviv. I thought that this is an opportunity for me to discuss, I guess, how I am, in a sense, bouncing back and forth between a couple worlds, a couple different worlds, mostly in my mind. You could say that I bounce back and forth between the US and Europe and that I still do work that I still have work that's based in the US and of course I have work that's based in Europe and elsewhere in the world but at times I feel like I I guess I'm before I get into this here's a little peek that says cafe in Cyrillic anyway that as it starts to rain here what timing there's such a cafe culture here. Lviv is renowned for its coffee as well as its chocolate and its beer. And the chocolate I wouldn't say so much as an indicator of how European it feels but the the beer culture and especially the coffee culture makes it feel very European and I'll try to show you some more. Here's another little cafe. Anyway as I talk about myself a bit I'm also going to try to fill you in on what I'm looking at here in Lviv and make some comparisons, draw some parallels. So this week I really laid it all out on the line. Is that the proper term? Jeez, I forget sometimes. I haven't listened. I haven't been listening to a whole lot of sports broadcasting lately. So uh, I really laid it all out there in order to get to Mr. Saakashvili. This, 
this week, I made a post about it on Facebook. My sleeping schedule was an utter wreck. For one, I ended up with bed bugs when I stayed in a $4 night hostel in Kiev. That was not a very good idea. And given that I had already gotten bed bugs earlier this year at a hostel, and two years ago I got bed bugs at a hostel, so I now I've gotten bed bugs twice this year and three times in a period of about two years. So you'd think I might learn my lessons on being a little more cautious about where I sleep and put my body for hours at a time. It's just raining too hard, my phone's getting soaked. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I gotta pause. So I was just about to show you the opera house here and the, I guess I would call it the promenade. I don't know if they call it the promenade where people walk and have a nice time on a Sunday evening and listen to music and whatnot. When the skies open up and it's just absolutely pouring right now. But I've been through enough this week, so I'm not gonna quit now. I'm covered in bed bug bites. Uh, I barely slept all week. Last night I slept for a couple, couple hours on a three hour night train. Um, the night before I slept longer while I was on a cramped night bus. The two nights before that were bed bug nights in the hostel. The night before that I didn't sleep at all. Tonight I'll sleep on a bus again. The only time this week I slept in an actual bed I got bed bugs. So, but that's kind of the point I'm getting at. So. In order to get to Saakashvili, I had to pretty much pull out all stops. What he's been doing is he's been announcing on his Facebook page when and where his next rally or speaking engagement is going to be. So this whole week I've been glued to his Facebook page. Now I'm walking through mud, but whatever. And on... Friday, now I'm walking through a river, on Friday, Saakashvili announced that he would be at the main square in Ivano Frankivs 4 p.m. Saturday. Well, by my luck and kind of how things work with Ukrainian transport, the train on Friday night to Ivano Frankivs from Kiev, granted I, I was in Kiev, the capital, uh, that train was all booked, no more tickets available. So then I start going to all the different bus stations they have, and if you know anything about Ukrainian transport, it's, there isn't just a central bus station where all the buses go. They, they do have a central bus station, but it's, it's not very central and it's not much of a bus station. It's basically a hole in the ground next to McDonald's. So I'm taking the metro back and forth between the train station, the bus station. I'm going to the bus stations outside the train station. This is Friday night. Running back and forth, back and forth, trying to get something that will either take me to ivano Frankivsk or to Lviv, where I'm at right now. And around midnight, after everything else had failed, I randomly see a bus outside the train station that has the sign Lviv on it. So I go on, but the driver tells me no, all the tickets have already been sold. And I head back into the train station. I don't remember if it was before or after, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, oh here's the here is the opera house behind me. I'm trying not to get the camera soaked. Not doing such a good job, but there it is. There's the opera house in Lviv. Very beautiful setting. I'll try to get in the background right now. So I go into the train station Friday night. It's around midnight. 
I, I'm just exhausted. I conk out for like 10 minutes, get woken up by a Ukrainian soldier. I think, it, I don't think it was a policeman. I think it was a soldier. There are soldiers all over the place in Ukraine on the streets and whatnot. And then not too long after that, I just go back out to check on that bus again. And an hour later, it's still sitting there. And I just, I use what I know in Russian. I've been, actually my Russian's improving a bit. I've been winging it the whole week. Pretty much getting by using Russian. And the bus driver finally lets me on, puts me in the very back, it's cramped. But I get on, I get to Lviv in the morning, then I take another bus to ivano Frankivs. The journey took out a total like 12 hours, something like that. But I make it. And then at the very end, I track down Saakashvili. I get my 90 second or so interview with him. And that was very fulfilling. That was very rewarding. I just, I love the chase in these journalistic endeavors of having to get to the story. And I really laid it out, laid pretty much, <laughs> I do not remember the sports saying. I laid it all out on the line. Boy, I haven't been watching ESPN in years. Uh, yeah, I laid it all out on the line to get to Ivano Frankiv's in time to see and hear Saakashvili and then to actually get to interview him very briefly. So that was very rewarding. That felt very fulfilling. And that's the kind of stuff that I love to do. I love to live a life of travel and to incorporate witnessing world events firsthand into that life of travel. It's something that I'm so passionate about. And I'm living that life. I'm, I'm on pace to be in 30 different countries this year. Recently, going back a year or two, I witnessed the refugee crisis firsthand. This year, I've seen a couple big elections or one was a referendum. So that's very fulfilling, but at the same time, I guess the duality here is that I've let my social life take a beating. Particularly my dating life. It has just really fallen off over the past year or two. Now there's lightning, I guess. Oh, there's thunder too. Beautiful setting. I wish I could get the umbrella out of the photo, out of the picture, but that, that's not a good idea. All right, so here behind me is the, now behind me, is, I guess I would call it the promenade here in Lviv. Anyway, extremely European here. I can't really give you the whole feel because it's pouring and people are running for cover. But you now get to have the opera house in the background. There we go, that's better. In the background of the photo or video, I should say. So yeah, I'm kind of divided in two right now the way Ukraine is. I, this week I'm assessing Ukraine a little bit in addition to traveling around and covering the news. I would like to write an analytical piece about Ukraine sometime in the near future considering that I'm spending basically a month traveling around the country and I've spent a fair amount of time previously in the south in the Odessa region. So uh, yeah I'm putting together my thoughts a bit on where Ukraine is at and I can't help but see and feel how it seems like two different countries based on where you're at. Well, I kind of seem like two different people, at least within my own mind. I'm really, really starting to gel in terms of travel and to some extent reporting, but I think the reporting's coming along and when I have weeks like this, when I'm really living my passion, it's very fulfilling. Well, socially, it just it hasn't been that way. And if I don't let bed bugs and no sleep and being beaten up physically be excuses to deter me from what I'm doing professionally and what I'm doing in terms of my passions with travel and seeing world events, then what, why the heck should I let anything, any excuses or fears deter me in terms of going out, meeting some girls, 
being more of an open, direct, honest person in my day-to-day -day interactions, that, I mean, that, that's really at the core of this. I really strive to live a life of openness and honesty and liberty, and part of that liberty is social freedom. And my whole life, I've wanted to speak my mind to anyone, anytime, anywhere. And it, to some extent, I've embodied that attitude in my journalism when I'm out chasing a story and giving it all I've got to get to the story. And very briefly in my life, I've embodied that with socializing, meeting people, meeting girls, and dating. But that's really been lagging recently, and life's too short for more excuses. Well, I guess in the pouring rain, as the skies have opened up, I've opened up a bit too. This is something I've been meaning to do for a while with the vlog, rather than make it just about politics and travel. And I'd love to talk to you more about Lviv. I'll be back here someday, so it's not really a big deal that I'm not discussing so much about how European it is and the contrast with Odessa and whatnot. But this is a great opportunity for me to open up. It's something that I really need to do. So go figure. The sky opens up. I open up. I hope you enjoyed this or got something out of it. Maybe what I'm thinking is that if you watch my videos, you'd like to have a better sense of who I am beyond just the this is Josh Friedman reporting from blah, 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 blah. There is this going on and blah, 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 beyond the hard news, which I'm very passionate about and that's why I do it. But if you're watching these videos and you're interested in my reporting and interested in me and my travels and you might be interested in who I am as a person inside and beyond all the news and the politics. So thank you for giving me this opportunity to open up and take a step in this journey of living a life of openness and honesty and liberty. So I appreciate you for being here and for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them. I don't know which direction you might want me to take this. Uh, I'm curious to hear from you. So please leave a comment if you've got anything to say about what I've been discussing, both about myself and about Ukraine. And if you like the video, leave it a like, and I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. So my Ukrainian absolutely sucks, and since I've been in central and eastern Ukraine for much of the week, I'm just going to say, Das Vidania is Lvov. Okay, goodbye from Lviv.